<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and here with a Switch tutorial for the first time in a while, and something I think is pretty aesthetic, pretty cool, and pretty awesome in my honest opinion here. Here I'm going to be showing you all how you can set up a theme for your modified Switch running custom firmware. If you want to get something like this, you can get as static or as dynamic as you really want. This is something here that I've been using on my own Switch personally. I've been having a lot of fun with it, in all honesty here. And I wanted to show you all how you can set this up because there are a few little nuances that you need to iron out here. But for the most part, it's pretty simple, easy to do if you have a modified Switch and you're familiar with it. And it's pretty fun to check out and set up. So let's go ahead and check this all out here. Now for this, if you are wanting to get a theme such as this on your Switch, get everything set up here, you're of course going to need a modified Switch of some kind. It can be any model of the Switch as long as it is modified and you can boot into the Atmosphere custom firmware. Secondly, we're also going to need a PC because I'm going to be using that to download the themes and the application we're going to need. And finally, we're also going to need a way to transfer files to and from the micro SD card. Now everyone has their own way of doing this. I'm personally going to just use the good old way of turning off my switch, pulling out the micro SD card, popping it into my PC and transferring everything over. So with that, let's get everything set up here. Over on the PC side of house here, we're going to be using the Switch Theme Injector, which you can check out with the GitHub link down below in the description of this video here. It does have a really great description and write-up really covering everything on here, but if you just want a basic setup on here, I'll go ahead and show you that in this video. First of all, you are going to, of course, come to the GitHub repository down below in the description and go over to the releases. Over on the releases section, we can download the latest version here, which at this point is 2.7.1 at the time of recording this. Make sure it is set up for your firmware as well too, but this is pretty regularly updated, thankfully. But just download the latest nxthemesinstaller.nro file and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Next up, we are going to be using the wonderful Themeser site. This has been what I've preferred here, and this is probably going to be maybe the hardest part of this video because you're going to have to make your own selection here, really picking out exactly what you are wanting. So this site will also be linked down below in the description, and you can just have so much fun going through all of this here. So if we want to download a few things, let's just go ahead and see what some of the latest themes are. Some of these are pretty cool looking. I do like this Hyperlight Drifter one, for example. So if you want to download something like this, you can of course check everything out. This is a little bit of how it looks. And then you can just click on download pack right here to download the full pack. It downloads as a zip archive, but just like before, just save it somewhere you can easily find it. So I'm going to go there, and if you want to check out anything else on here, you can certainly do so. This is actually the one I was using for anybody who's wondering at the beginning. It's the Pixel Cyberpunk one, which I really seem to be favoring. The Persona 5 Dark one I really liked as well too. And you know, what if we just want to go with something like Project Clean? How about that? This one's also pretty popular it seems, but you can just download this and save it somewhere you can easily find it. Download as little or as many packs as you want to. Now you'll need to get your Switch's micro SD card hooked up to your PC. Whether you're going to be turning off the Switch, unplugging the micro SD card and popping it into an adapter, or if you're going to use something such as DBI or FTP to transfer, it doesn't matter as long as you can make sure it's accessible. But right here I have my micro SD card available and there's going to be a couple things we need to do. The first thing you'll need to do is go into your Switch drive directory, it should be in the root of your SD card, go into here, and you're just going to copy and paste the nxthemesinstaller.nro file. Once that's been copied over, we can go back, and you will have to make this folder here, just call it themes, all lowercase, all one word. That's all it has to be. And inside of here, all of your themes are going to go in as separate folders. So that's how we're going to set up the themes here. If you're going to be extracting the themes themselves, you can right click each zip file, and you can do something such as 7-zip to extract it into its own directory. So there's our first one, and I'm going to grab the same thing with the second one right here. You want them in their own directories because when you open them up, they just have a big series of files like this. So you want them to be a little clean and just show up properly in there. But once they're extracted as folders, we can right-click, cut out the two folders that we have, 
and paste them into the themes directory. So that's exactly how it should look. Each of your themes should just have all of the files in its own separate folder per theme. With all that transferred over, we can now right click, eject our micro SD card, go back over to the switch and boot into custom firmware. So I know the switch looked all done up and pretty before, but for the sake of this tutorial, I did end up reverting it and uninstalling the custom theme. So we can of course install a custom theme. So with that all set, once you have your switch booted up, go ahead, launch into it. And now we need to launch our homebrew. So for this here, we do need to run this with the full system resources. So you will need to make sure that you have a legitimately installed game on here, whether it is from a cartridge or something from the eShop. Once you have that, make sure you highlight over it. For this, I'm going to use my cartridge of murder by numbers, and you want to hold down the right shoulder button on your controller and then tap the A button. Keep holding it down, even if you have to sign in, make sure you get signed in, and as you can see here, we were able to redirect this to the homebrew menu. Now let's go ahead, go all the way down to NX Themes Installer and tap A to open it up. Here for the first time, it's going to extract out the home menu. So press A and let it extract. Once that's all done, just go ahead, hit A to this here. And it's going to give you some information here. This is really important. It's going to tell you that you cannot brick your switch with custom themes. However, sometimes you might run into issues where you just can't boot up your custom firmware, so it tells you which exact folders to delete right here. You can see them on screen, and if you need to take note of this, you can, but at the end of this video, I'm also going to show you how you can address that if you need to do so. So we can hit OK right here. Some more information you can check out, and once that's all done, there we go. We now see our themes that are available. So this is everything that we have on hand here, and we should be all good to go at this point to start installing. So for this, you can go ahead and pick one of your themes. I'm going to pick one of the newer ones I did. So let's go with the Hyperlight Drifter one. So you want to find one of your theme folders and tap the A button. And then from here, you're going to have to install each one of these. Now, many themes are going to have different parts to them, essentially, and not all of them are going to have the same. As you can see here, the Dreamer theme is going to have only four pieces. The Hanging on Strings one I have, only four. Hyperlight Drifter ends up having more. Looks like it has seven. Uh, there's another one, for example, my Persona 5 Dark one that I downloaded before. There's multiple ones that you can see. So for the apps page, there's three different ones you can use. And if you ever want to see a preview of these, you can tap the X button and you can see a preview of each one of these right here. So this is what they're going to look like when they're all installed. And you can pick which one you want. So I'm going to go back to the Hyper Light Drifter and I just prefer to install each of these ones one by one. So for these here, you can find whichever part you want for the all apps menu, tap A, and that's done. For the home menu, do the same thing. That's done, lock screen, there we go. The news applet, the player selection, this is a really full one here, all right. The settings applet, and there should be one last one here, which is going to be the user page. And there you go, that's all done. Now, if you ever want to install all of these really at once, like in a batch, you can actually tap the Y button and that will pick the first one. Then you can scroll down and you can tap the A button on any of these other ones here to pick which ones you want to install. Then you can press the plus button on your controller to install each of these in a batch if you ever want to do so. So I'm just kind of installing it a second time just for fun here. But now with all of this installed, we do have to do a full reboot of the console itself. So for this here, make sure you're able to boot into custom firmware again, whether you're using a hard modded switch or you're going to be using the jig and payload injecting method here. Go over to reboot and tap A on reboot. And would you look at that? Here is the immediate change with our work here. Let's go ahead and unlock this. And as you can see, we do have a nice big difference right here that we can see in pretty much everything. We can even bring up settings here, whatever we want to on this. Actually, let me go to the system settings itself. But you can see the difference here on everything. It is completely night and day. There is the users page, so super awesome to see overall, and one of the really fleshed out themes that you can check out. So this is pretty nice to see. Now, if you ever want to change up your themes, what you can do is exit out of here. We're going to launch the homebrew menu yet again using the app redirection that we used before. We're going to go back over to the NX Themes installer. And if you ever want to uninstall or change up a theme here, I'd recommend if you're going to change a theme, just flat out do an uninstall. And to do that, you want to come over here to the left. You can uninstall the current theme or uninstall everything, whatever you want to do. 
And at that point, once you do that, you're going to be able to reboot the system. So for that, I'll just go with uninstall everything, say yes, hit OK, and then I'm going to reboot my console. And there you go. As you can see, the console has rebooted and we are completely themeless on here. So we can launch this again. And if we want to install any other themes, we can do so. So I'm actually going to do that real quick, just so I could show you the fonts that you might have to look out for. So since we've already extracted everything, we don't have to do another extraction, but let's grab our other one, which is going to be Project Clean. So I'm going to just grab everything with a multi-install on here, grab all that, install selected, and once this installation is complete, thankfully this one's pretty quick, we're going to reboot our system yet again. There we go, that's done. Let's come over to reboot and see what happens. And this is pretty cool. Once it reboots, we get this project clean right here, smash A to unlock. So we're going to do that. And this is nice. I actually haven't run this one until now. So this is a really cool looking one and just shows the versatility of all this here. Really awesome to see overall. I love to see this here. Super cool. Either way, that is about all you have to do on here if you want all that up and running. A few other things to look out for, let's say your text doesn't look proper on here, like you cannot see start and options in the bottom right, for example, you're going to have to change the theme on the console itself. And to do that, go into settings, go down to themes, and you're going to have to change this to either basic white or basic black. From my experience, most themes work best in basic black. But as you can see, if we change it to basic white, we can barely see any of the text right here. So you're going to want to change your system setting theme right there, and that should be all good. Another really important component to keep in mind here is whenever you are updating your firmware, I'm going to say for both system firmware and atmosphere custom firmware, just keep this as a blanket rule. Whenever you are installing a new firmware, you're going to want to remove the custom theme that you already have running. So to do that here, let's say I want to update my atmosphere and my system firmware, or either one of the two, go ahead, launch into the homebrew menu with the same way that we've done it before. You're going to come over to the NX themes installer. And once you're in here, it's best to go down to uninstall theme and uninstall everything. Say yes, and then reboot your system. And once our system has been reverted back to a stock look and feel, at that point, you can then safely and easily update your atmosphere custom firmware and or your system custom firmware. And once that's done, if you update your system firmware, just make sure the latest release you're using of the NX themes installer is going to be compatible with the latest firmware version that you're running. In my example here, my switch is actually running system software 16.1 Point zero, but I do know that NX Themes Installer 2.71 works on firmware 17.0.0, so if I have to update to 17.0.0, it should be okay. Now, as you can see in this video, we've had some pretty good luck here, but for our final step, what if you run into the unfortunate issue where you restart your system after installing a theme, you're booting into Atmosphere Custom Firmware, and you notice that you're getting an error right off the bat from Atmosphere itself? Well, that's probably going to be from that folder that was mentioned that we do need to delete just in case. And this is going to be a thing to keep in mind in case you ever run into errors after you install a theme, or if let's say you end up updating your firmware and you do not remove the theme beforehand. This should fix it up. For this here, we are going to need to turn off our switch completely, and we're going to need to take that micro SD card and plug it into our PC. Once you have your micro SD card plugged in, go into the micro SD card itself, go into the atmosphere folder, go into the contents folder, and it's going to be this exact folder right here. It's going to be start with 01, followed by a series of zeros, and it's going to end in 1000. It's going to look exactly like this here on screen. So just make sure you match this up. Once you find it in here, it should look a little something like this, but we just need to flat out delete this entire folder. This is the only one we're going to delete. Don't worry about the other ones. This is the exact one here. So you can go ahead, delete this folder, then go back, right click, eject your micro SD card, and then take it back over to your switch and boot up custom firmware. So as you can see right here, if it worked successfully after you delete that folder, if you had any custom themes, they should no longer come up and you should be able to boot into your system software successfully. So that should get you through any of those last bits. So there we go. We're back to the theme that I've been favoring here. Just install this, but that is about it for installing themes on the Atmosphere custom firmware for the switch. Hopefully you all enjoy this. 
hopefully it helped out and hopefully you've been able to reskin your switch and make it look a little cooler now that you're running a pretty cool custom firmware on it if you haven't done this before here it's a really awesome little extra touch that you can do to really customize your switch and i love it especially on switches that you have like custom joy cons or even casings for that's probably my favorite to see it on there Anyways, that's about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped out. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If you did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. If you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. As I always say though, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone.